This is the Swishwire Podcast. Welcome to March Madness with Swishwire. We've got two very talented ballers with us tonight. Both transfers who have made their marks on a Winthrop team that has dominated conference play and been fixtures in title games for two decades. One is a rangy do-it-all wing, and the other is a bruising yet surprisingly mobile big man. We welcome Adonis Arms and DJ Burns Jr. Gentlemen, welcome to Swishwire. We appreciate you hopping on with us during such a big week. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. Um, both of you guys have been playing basketball for a long time. Was there a moment, whether it's you know in AAU in high school or just a, a few years ago? where you can remember a specific play or, or a moment when you just knew like, shit, I am meant to play basketball. I can do this. It's gonna be kind of funny for me. Um, I was playing football and basketball up until eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Or I was seventh or eighth grade. Um, I was I was playing against a really good team called Saluda Trail. Um, I don't know if you know who he is, but Darion Kendrick that goes to Clemson now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was me and him met in the open field playing football, and he um I thought I was running him down, but he was a confident player, so he kind of waited on me. And I I remember I went to I went to hit him, and I I remember. I'm looking up, and afterwards, I remember I'm on the ground, and I'm like, my coach is standing over me. I'm like, yo, did I hit him? He's like, uh, look over there. And he's, like, celebrating in the end zone. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I blacked out after after that hit for a really long time, for, for about two two minutes. And that's when I was, like, you know, um, I ended up, next few days, I got my first scholarship offer, and I'm like, all right, I'm a basketball player. We're done with this football stuff. We're just going to stick to the basketball now. Stick to the basketball. <laughs> That's when I knew for sure that I wanted to do basketball full time. That's <laughs> yeah, how about you? Uh, for me, uh, for me, I think it was I think it was in my JUCO. Well, it was really in high school. I really thought like I could play this game from the beginning, honestly, because I played baseball, I played football, and for me, baseball was just it was just too boring, honestly. Like I, I ain't got no hate against baseball. Like baseball is real fun, but it's just too slow for me. Football, like DJ said, like him, I, I don't like getting hit. Like, I don't know how they do it. Like, I just, it wasn't for me. So basketball was like a thing that I really loved. And uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Um, he's my favorite player. He really, like, gave me the inspiration to play. And in high school, when I started scoring and, like, I started making people fall and, like, I got my first dunk my junior year, I was just like, yeah, this, this is me right here. Yeah, this is me. Uh I got to ask McDonald's, man. Guys your size do not typically play baseball. What position were you? I was shortstop and uh, left field. That's a big shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just dropping guys left and right and dunking, them, uh, dunking on them in high school? Well, something like that. You know, I got my first dunk my junior year of high school. So, And it was a windmill, like, after practice. Like, I ain't know I was going to do it. I just tried it. And then – And you did it? It went through. I was. <laughs> That's crazy. So for both of you, not including your current teammates, who's the best player you've ever played with? Could be AAU, high school, could be back in middle school or anything. Who's the best player you've ever played with? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say my friend Brandon Clark. He in the league. Well, I got like. Mm -hmm. Either him or Saban Lee is is one of those two, but I'm gonna say Brandon Clark because you know what I'm saying I play with both of them. They know both of my guys, but I'm, I'm gonna go with Brandon Clark for sure. Saban Lee is killing it on the Pistons right now. I love him. Killing it. I was just going to have him yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Uh, for me, that's really a tough one, but I have to say. The best player I've been able to play with will probably have to be Cole Anthony up in this tournament in New York. Um, I went up there for the gym couch tournament. Mm -hmm. and this man just absolutely shut down the gym. Like, nobody really knew who I was, but me and him, like, we were the leading scorers of the game. And he just went off for, like, 40, and he was making it look easy. He's like, we're in ninth grade, and he's just dunking on everybody. We're like, who is this little kid? Man? He's just killing <laughs> 
So you just said the best players you've ever played alongside, but who's the best player that you've ever played against? We'll start with you, Adonis. Uh, played against? Um, I remember one summer in Milwaukee, uh, he might not remember this, but I remember one summer in Milwaukee, uh, I played against De'Aaron Fox and Jordan Poole. Oh. Me and Jordan Poole grew up in Milwaukee, so we was always going against each other. Like, he was on Playground Elite, and I was on the Spartans. And me and him, we wasn't really good friends at the beginning, <laughs> obviously, because we was going at each other. But mm -hmm. since, like, we grew up and we was playing against each other all the time, like, we started connecting a little bit more. We started being more friends. And, I mean, I think him or, obviously, De'Aaron Fox is really good. I only played against him one time, but – Consistently, I'm going to say Jordan Poole for sure. And what about you, DJ? Oh, uh, For me, I had to say Zion. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would Ooh. be – that'd be a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were third in the state, right, that graduating class? Uh, that man is just a freak athlete. There's no other way to put it. Um, I've got to witness that man do some crazy stuff live. Um. I remember we were playing and I was going off and I blocked his shot and he looked at me and he was like, bro, I'm about to foul you out. And I'm like, what do you mean? Foul me out. Like, He's tripping. But sure enough, right around that fourth quarter, we got about three minutes left. He fouled me out and he had, he had 18 when I left. And in three minutes, he finished with 32. Oh, Ooh, that stings. Three minutes. Mm-hmm. And they came back and beat us by four when we were up by 15. Oh. Damn. That stings. That stings. Um, so you guys both, you have different play styles, but you're both elite in your roles. You know, what you guys do well, you're elite at it. So who are some of the players you've tried to mold your game after? DJ, we'll start with you. Uh, honestly, I never really tried to mold my game after anyone. I watched a lot of the film on the bigger guys, like, that have the footwork like Kareem and, you know, Zach Randolph, obviously I get that comparison a lot, but yep. I don't really try to mold my game after anyone. I'm just trying to get my footwork as good as possible and make moves to score. I really focus on being a scorer. And now that I'm working on defense more, it's just like, you know, I just try to find my own lane and stick to it. I don't try to be like anyone else. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to get yours. It's DJ, what about you? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the same thing as DJ. Like I'm not really trying to emulate nobody. Like I said before, like Kobe was my favorite player of all time. So I like I got little things that I get from him. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to make my own game my own. Um, I had people that would say I play like we watching them right now, uh, PG 13. But like PG game is so I don't know. It's just unique that you can't really you can't really uh, compare that to nobody else. So. For me, I just want my game to be like that unique. Like, if someone see me play, they're like, "Dang, like he's tough," or like, or whatever. So, that's what I that's what I try to emulate, and that's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the next PG or next Kobe. You want to be the the first Adonis. The first AD. I feel you. Mm -hmm. I feel you. You know, uh, DJ, I, I love that comp that you gave Zach Randall. Um, you know, being being so close to the very top for. Um, Mr. Basketball in South Carolina, right behind Zion. Uh, Zebo actually was in a similar situation in the end. He finished second that year um, behind, I think it was Jared Jeffries. And watching you play, watching some of your game, you remind me so much of Zebo. Uh, it's insane. It's, it's absolutely insane just how much like him you really are. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm curious, coming out of high school, you decided you re wanted to reclassify in 2018. Uh, you chose Tennessee. Uh, redshirted as a freshman year. I know that you wanted to work on your body, work on your game, and, and come in um, as a redshirt freshman, making an impact. But then you decided to transfer home, and it seems like you found a home here at Winthrop. Um, has it really just been being closer to home that's made the difference, or has it been more than that? Uh, honestly, I feel like I could have thrived anywhere, honestly. But, um, Tennessee was a great experience for me and it helped me a lot with getting to where, excuse me, getting to where I'm at now. But once the situation didn't work out, I was pretty much sure that I wanted to come back to Winthrop. I had seen the guys like Don and we got Russ and Chase and all the guys that we had. I knew a lot of them coming in and I'm just like, 
man, we can build something here. Like, we can really go kill it. We go have, go and play big teams. Like, they were telling me about St. Mary's, St. Mary's and Fresno being scheduled and just in some games like that. And I'm like, look, we can do everything we want to do from right here. So, it really – I didn't really blink an eye when I found out that I was going to be transferred. Not found out, but when I decided to transfer. Yeah, this one's for you, Adonis. You spent two years at Mesa. Coming from Wisconsin, what made you choose Mesa? What made you choose to go that route? And did you know that you were a D1 player from the time you were there, or did that come later on? Uh, that's it's kind of crazy you say that because uh, in Milwaukee, um, like I was really one of those guys that were going to be like ranked, and I was told to go to like certain schools like Rufus King and like other type of schools, but I don't really know how it is. Um, like he knows because he's from Rock Hill, but growing up in Milwaukee, it's like you really got to know where you are, what time you're at. Like it's really, it's not really that safe, you know, growing up there. So for me, my mom just wanted us out of the city. So going to Arizona, uh, me coming out of high school, is just like I was highly touted, highly ranked or whatever. And then after that, it just dropped off. So honestly, I think Jugo was, was God gifted. Like if anything, I just give it up to him to be honest, because I didn't really know what the next route was going to be. Um, so coming out of high school, uh, you know, all the schools that were in Milwaukee, obviously I couldn't go to those cause I didn't live there anymore. So Mesa was a real uh, blessing in disguise, um, going there, uh, before I actually got on this call, I was talking to one of my coaches that recruited me there, coach G, uh, shout out to him. And he just saw, like, he called me the diamond in the rough or whatever. So he just saw the talent and he just saw like, just give him a chance, the opportunity, and that's all I need, really. And then I'll just do the rest. It seems like both of those opportunities gave you guys a lot of uh, options going forward. Um, and for both of you guys, I mean, uh, DJ, specifically for you right now, I mean, after an uh, interesting start to your college career, you settled right in at Winthrop. You won freshman of the year. You led the conference in field goal percentage. I think you were the only guy to score double digits in less than 20 minutes a game. What did it mean for you, uh, for your confidence? And I mean, did it really like validate your decision to come to Winthrop to have that sort of success right away? Uh, I would definitely say that it validated my decision, but if we're being honest, the confidence was always there. I just needed the opportunity to be given to me to play, you know? Um, yeah. People, you know, there's a lot of things that could have happened in that freshman year. It's like, yeah, you could have had your spirits broken the way they, they, the way things happen. And there was a lot about me where I could have felt bad for myself, but I never did. I just wanted to play. And coming into Winthrop, I was already recruited by Winthrop. They were the first school that ever offered me a scholarship way hmm. back when I was in eighth grade. So I had a great relationship with all of the coaches already. So it really, it was like, you know, this is, this is kind of like, you know, where you need to be. You know, it gave me the chance to humble myself, first of all, and really just sit down and put my head down and work. I like winter because this is a smaller school, so there's not as many distractions, and I can really stay out the way and just get to work. And it allowed me to it allowed me to really work on my game and take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, Adonis, you, you came in right off the bat, producing in a million different ways, you know, um, I mean, what did it mean for you choosing Winthrop uh, and having, again, that sort of success right away? Uh, for me, honestly, it's just, um, like DJ said, man, it's just confidence, you know? It's like, I was just, I can see it from him. Like, you're just born with that that type of that type of confidence, that type of motto that no matter where you go, you just go hoop. No matter what system it is, who's around you, you're going to find a way to put that ball into the hoop. So for me, scoring is always something that I've been like blessed with. Like growing up in Milwaukee again, when I was little, they used to call me little Kobe. So like giving that nickname alone, just knowing like I'm just going to hoop, I'm just going to play. So for me, it's just, I'm just blessed to be able to do that. And then, you know, the hard work says it all, honestly, like, you know, you come into the game and you just playing it might look easy to some people, but for real, they don't know what you're doing behind the scenes. So for me and DJ, I can say it for us too, like, you know, whenever you need the ball, give it to him and he's going to produce. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And Adonis, when, when we watch you play, I mean, when anyone watches you play, we could tell you could hoop and you're a hooper. But what some people don't know about you is 
You're also majoring in kinesiology. I don't know if I pronounced that right, so I'm sorry. But you're also Kinesiology. You're way kine off. kinesiology. Just say kin. 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 So you're majoring in that. So um, how do you balance basketball and your studies, and what do you plan on doing in the future with your major? Uh, man, so kinesiology is just a study of the body and how it works. So for me, after – all right, so after basketball, I just want to be an athletic trainer, uh, like a trainer like basketball wise to show – Uh, kids how to play the game the right way and show them how to score like my team does for me so uh, kinesiology is just a, another building block to get towards that um, and with studies it's like you know like DJ said winter is a place that's real small so you can focus on those things you're, you're not really bombarded with a whole bunch of outside noise so for me I couldn't go outside to play anyways as a little kid without my homework being done so my mom always tells me even now You got your homework done, what your grades looking like? I need to see him. Like, she's still on me, and I'm in college. So, for me, it's always been that, like, enrooted thing. Like, you do your homework, and then you go play. So, it's not really much for me. And also to follow up, another one for you, Adonis. In the 2018 to 19 season, you were incredible in terms of, like, a, statist a statistical standpoint. And you, you had some accolades to go along with that as well. You won the 2019 GNAC Conference Player of the Year and also Newcomer of the Year. You led the conference in scoring and you were second in steals, top 10 in blocks and field goal percentage, as well as top 15 in rebounding. What did a season of this caliber do for your confidence? Like I said before, the confidence always there. I just need the opportunity. So for me to get those numbers, obviously off the bat, my uh, my teammate, Obi Megwa, uh, he brought me in there and he was like, yo, when you come in here, you're going to kill this conference off rip. Like I already know you are. And me just playing, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go in and do the best I can. And then at the end of the season, I get those accolades and I'm just like, I'm shocked really. Because I was hiking at the end of the season. I wasn't really worried about none of that. Like, I was hiking, and then my phone started blowing up. I got player of the year, newcomer of the year, and all those accolades that you just named. And I was just shocked and happy. And I called my mom immediately after, and we celebrated a little bit. So I'm, I'm curious, at um, um, Northwest Nazarene, right? Yeah. Um, in that year, you played a couple D1 teams. You played uh, Portland State, and you played Idaho, I believe. You put up numbers against them. You were putting up like 20 and six against those D1 opponents. Um, you know, you're talking about the confidence was always there, but um, I mean, that's that's got to say something to you, right? That's got to mean something for you to be playing up a division, playing from a D2 to a D1 and going out there with those guys and, and putting up numbers. Yeah. I mean, like I said, uh, it's just basketball to me. Like a lot of people will say like, There's, a, there's so much things that go into basketball, but for me, it's just really, it's just hooping, honestly. Like, we got plays, we got defensive things that we got to do. We got spots that we got to, you know, everything is in the game of basketball. It's just basketball. It's just hoop to me. So, it don't matter who we playing. Like, if I'm at a D2, we playing Idaho, we playing Portland State, we playing Villanova. Like, it's just hoop to me. Like, it don't matter to me, period. I like that. I just need the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you guys as a team this year, I mean, you've been incredible. You've only lost one game, and it was a really close game. So my question for both of you is, a lot of people, they say there's legit pressure on this perfect season. And do you guys feel any release of pressure after that one loss, especially considering the second run you guys have been on? Uh, honestly, I'll take this one. Honestly, I feel like that was more pressure for people who allow pressure to get to them. Um, I can at least speak for me and him. I know that the pressure is not really a thing. Like, we're going to come in consistent every day, and we're going to put in the work that we need to win. It doesn't really matter how many games we've won or lost. Like, at the end of the day, we're going to come in and try to make things happen. So it's not really about wins or losses. We're going to come out with that same effort every time and give it to them exactly how we can. It's not really such a thing like, We need a pressure to be great. It's like we train every day to be great. So this is what we expect. That loss was just a mental lapse that we had as a team and we recovered from it really well. Mm -hmm. So you guys aren't really, you know, just looking at the record really at all going into the tournament. You're just going out there, going to be dogs, going to hoop. Right. I mean, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but we're, we're going out with the mindset that we're going to win every time, regardless of who, who or where. Mm -hmm. I like that. 
watching you guys play, it seems like you have an incredible culture and your chemistry is clearly there. What, what about Winthrop brings the culture together so well and how does that translate to on the court play? Okay. Um, first of all, our coach, our coach has developed an amazing culture. Um, I don't sometimes understand how he keeps that same energy at the highest level of intensity every single day. But I admire it a lot, and I I hope to one day be that way. But when you have a coach like Coach Kelsey, you can't have, like, a down day. You know, I mean, if you're having a down day, that's cool. But, like, you better bring it. Like, when you when you come onto that court, you better leave everything else behind and focus on what's ahead. So it's really just – it starts with the coaching. We're, we're coached by a great staff full of geniuses in the basketball world. Um and it really, the positivity that they bring to us every day and the way they push us, it really spreads. And they they recruited a lot of good guys, like great guys off the court. You know, um, Coach Kelsey would say all the time, like, he would let any one of us marry his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, oh, we just, we, we got a great group of guys and a great group of guys that are going to work hard every day. And it's great when you have guys who can hoop on the court, but are great people off the court. It really takes, it makes it a lot easier to be around and it makes it a lot easier to grow and grow that chemistry when you know that the guy beside you is going to go in the foxhole with you and really work with you. I mean, you guys, speaking of the foxhole, you guys are about to be in it. You, Winthrop has a history of making the tournament fared fairly well against some of the best teams in the country. Um, what is it this year specifically about your squad that makes you think that you guys can have some real success and really punch your ticket into some of the later rounds? Um, I think it's just the camaraderie that DJ was talking about. I mean, like when you go into a game and you know that the guy on the left and the guy on the right of you are going to do everything that they can in their power to win the game and give everything that they have to win the game, then you got more confidence in yourself and that flows off to other players and then your coaching staff as well. So like he said, like, I'd rather go in the foxhole with them than somebody I don't know. I'd rather go in there with people that we sweat with, that we work hard with, bleed with, you know, even like show emotional ties with sometimes if it gets to that point. So like for for them and for us, I mean, it, it's it's a blessing, really. Like I'm gonna say it again, like it don't like this team is, is so different that like you can't really there's no word for me for me that I could really put out and tell you that like this is what it means. Like, it's just what coach be saying, 25 strong. Like our culture is just like the brotherhood. Like it's just something that's so put together and that's so perfect. Like DJ said, like we off the court, we still hang out with each other. When we on the court, we work as hard as we possibly can to get that elite result that we want every single time. So to push our ticket into the next rounds and go deep into this tournament, is just staying together and staying locked in and staying focused. And to make that even a little more specific, a thing that separates us is teams want to play six or seven guys, 30 minutes, and we're a team, we're going to come at you with 12 guys, and we're going to all come out there with the goal of kicking your ass every time we step on that court. So when you got a group of guys who can all put the ball in the hoop, all committed to defense, all committed to each other, it just adds a whole nother level to the intensity that we bring to teams with that energy because – a lot of teams can't keep up because they want to play those same five, six, seven guys. And we're going to throw everybody we got at you and come at you relentlessly the whole game. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Uh, two two follow-ups to that, actually. I was shocked when I was looking at some of your guys' box scores, looking at some of your guys' games. You guys play so many people. That's not something you see, really, at, at the college level. I mean, you've got three guys, I think, who play more than 20 minutes. You've got – I think legitimately 12 or 13 guys who are playing more than 10. Um, I mean, that's going to be huge come, come tournament time that you guys can throw all these bodies at people, all these guys that do so many different things. Um, and then uh, Adonis, you had mentioned 25 strong. Can you explain what that is for us? Uh, 25 strong is just the organization. It's just the, the team. It's the, the head coach. It's the players. It's the managers. It's the academic advisors. It's the managers. It's the, I don't know, it's the, the people that wipe the floor. It's the team chaplain. The team chaplain. It's, the people it's that support them. The people that support. It's everybody that's in our group that's that's been there since 
the beginning. You know what I'm saying? That's who we know, who we gonna go to war with that we know is gonna be with us. That's 25 strong. That's 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 this right here. I like that. That's big. Um, but before you can get to this tournament game, you guys have to put the work in. And so there are a lot of guys who, you know, physically or, or play style wise might be somewhat similar to the, to the two of you guys. Um, and we love that we were able to get both of you guys on because we can give a lot of those people extra advice and extra training tips. Um, so before we get into the skill work, what is the best piece of advice that you guys um, have received about your game? that you think someone else could also benefit from hearing? For me personally, um, get into maximum shape. That is something that I've, um, growing up, I've had not a struggle with, but like I had, was not being very consistent. And I feel like getting to that point where I'm at now, where everything is important to me, you know, this, even the small things like what I eat, drinking water instead of a Gatorade after a game, you know, just the small things that I had to tweak is just made all the difference for me personally. Uh, for me, I think it's just staying in attack mode, just always staying ready that, you know, it might not be a score, it might be an assist. It might not be an assist, it might be like a steal that you're saying, just always staying ready and consistently working on your craft. You know, it might not be every night you going, you doing cone work, it might just be, little shots, little, little uh, form. It might just be, you know, like DJ said, like conditioning, sprinting. So I just think working on your overall game in every aspect that you can to be the best you can is is best for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. We've actually, we've heard that a few times, uh, something along the lines of a great player who's passive is an okay player or an average player. Uh, staying in, in, in that go mode is a huge thing that I think a lot of people kind of forget when they're on the court sometimes. Mm -hmm. and you know as you were saying you know being passive i mean like it makes you from mediocre to great and like if you're just like off ball if you're just standing there in the corner or just defense you're not trying i mean you're not going to be to the level you should be and to focus more on the individual base skills dj you are a lead in the post you're aggressive down there you're strong down there especially that face-up jumper so how did you develop such great go-to moves in the post was it just simply training or was it just one v one in the paint uh, well, actually, um, this kind of came because I've always been one of the taller people out of anywhere that I've been. So it was really like I played on one team and we were terrible. <laughs> like I would have a 32 point game and we'd lose by more than 32 type deal. So really just growing up like that as a young kid, like I had to figure out ways to score and being taller than everyone, I'm like, all right. If I can just get to this pull up in the middle and get really good at doing that, then I will be able to score and make a contribution or force a team to double team me so I can get it to my one shooter. You know, I had that problem growing up when, before I started playing with QCA and Georgia Stars and all those teams. I really had to actually like work really hard to develop that. And my coaches did a good job. They're like, okay, we don't want you to be the basic, you know, drop step layup kind of guy like we want you to extend your game out and be able to do multiple things and that really helped me now just being able to make moves off the block or go straight at you directly in the post like just being able to be versatile really helped because without it I don't really think I could have made it this far this one's for you Adonis you're a jack of all trades you're extremely versatile as you can create on all three levels you can play make and you're an elite defender how do you balance all of this when you're training in the gym? Uh, I think I, I have a, a whole lot of trainers, actually. So they there's uh, – man, honestly, when we were in the gym, I want to give a shout-out real quick to uh, Desmond Howard. Uh, he's one of my trainers. Marcus Howard's big brother. Um, uh, Trey Dalton, he's my trainer. Uh, Jay Work and um, – just all of my recent coaches that put the time in, didn't go home, just stayed after and made sure I got my shots up. So for me, training, they always put like an implement of defense in there. It might not be like slides or something, but it might be like a lazy pass and I split the lane, go get it and go finish on the other end. Or I'll do the same thing, pull up for a three or do the same thing, go all the way down, stop, kick, run out, hit another three, something like that. So 
defense has always been like an implementation to one of my workouts. Um, mainly for me, like shooting is a heavy thing that I do. I do ball handling drills, um, passing, like I said before. So uh, during the summer, that's where I put a lot of my work in. I really go to grind mode so I can be prepared for the season. Uh, you know, DJ, the, the way that um, Adonis mentioned that he does a lot of stuff in, in training with uh, some of these guys, I've noticed watching you play that you have got excellent hands. I mean, uh, again, the, the Zebo comparison comes in. He was always grabbing every loose rebound, everything in chaos. Um, how did you develop that, those, those hands, you know, that sort of tactile sense for the ball in chaos? Uh, I must say that came from just playing, like always playing with the older guys growing up. Like, man, look, I'm not going to say that everybody where I grew up was the most talented, but like these dudes are going to play hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going up for a layup and they might run up under you thinking they were trying to block it, but it really, they just like, you know, took your legs out. Like, so you always got to be ready for something. So like when, I'm like, I would get double teamed in open gym if I was scoring too much. So it was just like, you know, you got to find ways to play through it. And playing with those older guys, it made me tougher because they would beat up on you if you let them. So I had to learn real quick, like, yo, when they throw this pass a million miles an hour just because they don't think, like, they think that you're too young or too little to catch it, like, you better catch it or else you're going to be sitting watching for the rest of the day for the next three hours. You're going to be sitting waiting until it's your turn to get picked up. And you still might not get picked up. They might kick you off your team. So... It was like really just that competitive edge that I got from being a kid. It was just like, yo, it just carried over. And you really just try to work on those things as you get older because you learn that like, yeah, this was street ball, but now I'm dealing in these same situations when I'm playing you know, on the stage we're at now. So, yeah. Throwing in the fire. This is the last one for you, Adonis. You've shown that you have an insane nose for the ball, whether it's in the passing lanes or stripping ball handlers. How have you developed these instincts? They, they just instincts, man. Like I was just whispering to DJ, it's just anticipation. Like I don't, I don't really like. I train to do those things, but in the in the moment, it just happens. Like I don't really know what, like I can't really explain it. It just happens. Like if someone does like a crossover dribble, and I feel like I can get it, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go get it. Like I don't, I don't really know. Sometimes when I see a pass going, like, the ball is, like, I'm not going to say it's, like, moving slower, like, it slows down or nothing like that, but, like, I can see it in a matter of a time for me to go steal it and go take it and go to the other end. So, I think for me it's just I just anticipate very well and I just read the defense. Um, so, that's, that's basically it for me. Well, I got one last question for you guys. Are the Clips going to come back tonight? I know they're in that hole right now. They're down at half, right? Definitely not coming back. Um, not coming? Oh. I, got um, I don't even think Luca's really turned up yet. So, yeah, I don't think they have a shot tonight. I think we might as well wrap this one up. They beat them by, by like, what, like 50, 60, 70 that one time? Nah, I don't think it'll be that bad. I'll say about, I'll say about 15, 20, though. They're gonna get oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This time it'll be 15, 20. But last time that was brutal. I got, I got the Mavs, too. Unless Paul George start going crazy, then that might be something different. I think that might happen. I got the Clippers. I got the Clippers. Well, DJ and Adonis, man, you guys have had such a great season. Tomorrow you guys can take another step in your journeys uh, facing off against Nova. You guys have this dynamite squad behind you. You're storming through the Big South this year. Now you've got a chance to keep it going this weekend. You guys have the pieces to make some noise in the tourney. And you guys have such great size and cohesiveness to really give them a run for their money. There's a 12 over a five seed every single year. We think you guys are going to be it this year. We'll be watching. We'll be rooting for you guys. Um, thank you for hopping on with us and best of luck tomorrow and beyond. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Have it.